Hello and welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider of the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Bryan alongside Melissa McFerrin. And Coach, we're in the conference play now, but first of all, you had that, that big 11-day break, and I know uh, that can make coaches a little nervous sometimes. You're able to practice a little bit, then send them on the Christmas break, then they come back. But for what we have seen so far, they they seem to have gotten into their conditioning and looked pretty good coming back. They did, and I think the kids did a, a wonderful job over the holiday break, making sure that they got some rest but also got some fitness in. Um, we come back and kind of check in with them to make sure they did exactly what they were supposed to. And and it, it was critically important because we've had to manage conditioning and fatigue with the start of the conference season. But we've gotten off to a fairly good start. and. Um, Looking forward to the rest of it. Three and two through conference play, but you mentioned we've had a lot of games in a short amount of time. Fortunately, this this part of the schedule came when you weren't in class, so it helps a little bit with, with the recovery. They don't have to uh, to get up the next day and go to class and then try to worry about trying to get some rest or some sleep. But talk about the management between the games, the practices, uh, things like ice baths. Go back to your apartments, get some of that extra sleep. It's been really interesting. I, I told the players yesterday, I, I always go talk to them when they're in the ice bath, try to distract <laughs> them a little bit from the agony of that. But I told them, I said, this is the closest thing they're going to be to pros. Right. Because that's all they have to do is go to practice, watch video, go home and get rest, go to the ice bath, get the, go to the training room. And, and we've done a lot of that. Probably the biggest adjustment that we've made is we're doing a lot of our prep with the density of games right now and the density of the schedule. We're doing a lot of our prep on video as opposed to on the court because when you're three games in five days, four games in seven, you simply cannot spend that much time on the court. Coach, you started off with the loss at Temple, but then you got you got red hot. You come back with a great win over Tulane. That stretch of three games, Tulane, and you go up to Cincinnati. Uh, between there, you had Houston at home. We're really playing well. Well, we've we've had a very good focus. I've mentioned that several times. That I think our seniors are doing an amazing job of keeping our team focused, talking about what's to come in the locker room, not allowing our minds to drift and. And that can happen with any team, um, but particularly with young players. So I think our seniors have done a great job. Our seniors are they're on a mission to to prove that they're a team that's that's uh, worthy of postseason play. So they've just they've just done an amazing job. That three games in five days, though, that yeah. was that was a stretch. And of course, we started with the great Tulane win, an NCAA tournament team from a year ago, one that we know that win could factor into the standings or. Um, into the the placement of teams in the standings as as we go down the stretch here, but uh, to come away with three wins in that th five day stretch was was critical. Would have been nice to pick up the fourth one against Tulsa. Unfortunately, some of the things that we'd relied upon early in the conference schedule, which was shooting the ball incredibly mm -hmm. well, that kind of left us in the second half of Tulsa. Coach, you turn around uh, on Wednesday uh, to face number one UConn at the Fieldhouse. It's kind of funny because of the way the games were were packed together. We played Sunday, we played Wednesday. That's not a huge break, but it seems like a huge break that you have <laughs> two, two prep days to get ready for that. Well, we, we spent some time prepping on the court yesterday. We'll spend some time prepping today on the court, um, but we're going to keep it short because even though it seems like two days off, our players have not had a day off since before Christmas. Truly a day off. No video, no conditioning, no cardios. No treatments. They haven't had a day off since before Christmas, so um, we need to manage that uh, mental fatigue probably more than than even the physical fatigue right now. So, uh, but we're excited about UConn coming in. We know that uh, they're going to present a challenge, but we've got to show that we've made some improvement in that regard. Yeah, you mentioned, of course, a tremendous challenge. Number one team in the country. Uh, it's the first time we've had a number one in the El Marone since '99. Had a number one win in '84 against Louisiana Tech, but. But I know what you want to get out of this is is the effort and the fight. You, you take a look at the first four UConn games we played, and, and the first three had tremendous fight, mm -hmm. had it relatively close at the half. I know you were disappointed w when we went up there last year. I know you had made some comments on the post game show that it doesn't matter who it is, if, it, if it's a team that's struggling, we're facing the number one team in the in the country. We want to have that fight. I know, especially your seniors and anyone on that team last year, would like to to bounce back, have some fight because you can get a lot out of this game. We can get a lot out of this game, and um, and I will refer back to that. That you you do not want to be in Gamble Pavilion on Senior Night. Right. You just don't want to be there. That's that's not a game you circle on the schedule and say, oh yeah, we're looking forward to that one. <laughs> um, 
But th- that's what it was. The the three previous games, we played them all at the Forum. We played fairly well through the first half and came away from those games feeling like we had solved some things in terms of how to compete against UConn and how to score against UConn. Um, we're bringing them back to the field house this year. That's uh, something our players have wanted. Now, that doesn't mean everything's going to be rosy. You have to still play right. UConn. Um, we're focusing right now on making sure that we don't beat ourselves. Uh, we've got to take care of the basketball. Their transition game is absolutely phenomenal. So we want to make sure that if we can offensive rebound against this team, we need to do that. But we also need to protect the basket. And we don't want live ball turnovers. Um, their their defensive rebounds turn into transition. We got to protect the three point line. We've got to get them to settle into a half court offense. Now you're going to turn around as well. Go back on the road Saturday at SMU, and that's going to wrap up this big stretch. That's going to be the seventh game in, in 18 days, and hard to believe in an 18 day span. You're you're nearing the halfway mark of conference play. We only play SMU once this year. We play them at their place. Um, we've got a little bit on the line here, not just the conference schedule, but they handed us a, a home loss late in the year last year that, that we won't forget. SMU is an improved team though. We know the, the Australians, um, they're back, they're better. They've um, added some guard play to their team. So they already have a couple upset wins in, in the conference, but as we're looking at them, they're probably not upset wins. They're probably that much better of a basketball team. So it will be it will be a difficult difficult schedule, but um, in a difficult game, but one that we need to, that's one of those road wins that we're, that we're going to count on, and we've got to work very hard to make that happen. Rhonda has done such a nice job. It's like facing Lisa Stockton. She's been down there so long, so you know what you're going to get, but you still have to execute against them, and it's, it's funny how the series has gone, uh, especially since you've been here. It seems like the team that's really needed a win, and a lot of times on the road, Good. has come away with a win. You've got some big wins down there. we got some big wins down there. Um, we played them in the conference tournament a time or two right. starting last year. I think three years ago we played them in the conference tournament when we hosted. And Rhonda, just, she just does an amazing job. She's a very good basketball coach. They always have kind of an ace in the hole. They've mm-hmm. always got a transfer that's sitting out that transferred from Oklahoma State or from TCU because of the Dallas metro area, they've got a lot of kids that come home. And um, SMU, great education, has been very appealing for transfers that are looking for their second chance. So um, that's going to be a factor as well because she's she's got another player or two like that uh, in the works. But nonetheless, just always a, a great competitive basketball game. All right. Well, Coach, best of luck against UConn and SMU this week. Thanks, Jeff. That's Melissa McFerrin. I'm Jeff Brightwell for the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.